guys, Mrs. Talk Techie here, and for today, I'm going to run through an entire le lesson uh, instruction on how slavery divided a nation uh, and just kind of show you how it works with Edpuzzle. Uh, and then, of course, you can always link your Edpuzzle account to your Google Classroom. So here we go. I'm going through the entire thing like if I were to be doing it in the classroom. So, first of all, we're talking about sectionalism and how it divides a nation and how that sectionalism, uh, that tension grew between the United States amongst the North and the South. And when we talk about tension, I like to think about a rubber band and how slowly over time things keep happening to the point where that tension is growing and eventually we know it's going to lead to civil war. So, what are our three causes of the Civil War? I like to teach them as the three S's because the first one is sectionalism. And sectionalism is the idea of loving your region, your section, more than the whole, more than your country. So the South became uh, loyal to their Southern region versus the United States in its whole. And this occurred because of um, the climate and geography and how that created their economy. And because of that, that formed their section. The North became industrial, the South became agrarian, right? The plantation system. So there was, there was this dependence on their, uh, their economy that forced that sectional differences. Um, you also have, of course, one of the biggest ones, slavery. Not the only one, but one of the biggest issues is slavery. And the idea of slave legalizing sla slavery. The North was anti-slavery, against slavery, and the South was pro-slavery. Why? They depended on slave labor for their plantation system. Uh, and lastly, we have states' rights. And this really was a, a huge issue when it came to the nullification crisis back when Jackson was president and this issue about the tariff of abominations. Um, and the question was, do states have the right to uh, claim a law, a federal law to be unconstitutional? Can they override or overrule or overthrow a federal law? Can they choose not to follow it? Uh, and of course, the answer is no, because at the end of it, even though federalism, there's a shared power between the federal and the state government, at the end of it, it's the federal government that has more power. Uh, so all of these issues start to come to a boil. And before you know it, that sectional tension is so strong that eventually this is going to lead to civil war. So let's talk about some things that are really, really tightening that tension between the North and the South. The first, if you notice here, is this, is this um, idea of congressional power. North having uh, being considered free states and the South being slave states. And as time progresses, and you notice in that timeline, we're trying to keep this balance between free and slave states. Why is there a need for a balance in Congress between free and slave states? Well, because if you have more uh, states and state representation for people who are for slavery, then you're going to pass laws that are going to help you out that are more in your favor. If you have more representation that are against slavery, so northern states, then you're going to try your best to maybe start passing laws to outlaw slavery. And so this idea of trying to keep the balance between free and slave states in Congress really becomes a, an issue uh, and a cause for the Civil War. And what you're going to notice next in these next couple of compromises is America trying to keep that balance, lower that tension, uh, put a Band-Aid over an open wound. That's what they're trying to do. You know what I mean? Just kind of put a Band-Aid over things, but eventually it's not going to hold. And so the question here is, how do we balance the power in Congress between free and slave states. Uh, in 1820, Missouri wants to be admitted as a slave state. Now, at this time, we have an equal amount. We have an equal amount of free versus slave states. If Missouri comes in as a slave state, 
then who's going to have more power in Congress? The southern states, right? So the question is, how do we balance that out? How can we make it fair? So what they decided to do is they realized that Maine, which is up here, Maine has enough population and meets the requirement to be admitted into statehood. So what they did is they added Maine as a state and as a free state. And so now we kept that balance and we relieved that sectional tension that we had between the free between North and the South. And so that was known as the Missouri Compromise. M Missouri wants to be added as a slave state. And so they add Maine to keep the balance. The other thing they also did is they drew a line in what was back then the Louisiana Purchase, this Louisiana Territory. They drew a line right here. And the line said from this line up north of that line, there will not be any slavery allowed. And from south of that line, slavery will be allowed. So that's what they ended up doing. So you see here, we have Missouri that became a slave state and Maine that became a free state, as well as that compromise line. That's how we alleviated that sectional tension. So uh, what we would do here is there was an attempt to keep the balance in Congress between free and slave states. And the next are the three things that were decided. Missouri is admitted as a slave state and Maine as a free state. And of course, we have that Missouri Compromise line. North of that line, no slavery. South of that line, slavery would be admitted. So what did that do? It relieved temporarily for the time being, it relieved sectional tension. It eased it because they were to a point where they were getting upset because one, which was the South, was going to have more power in Congress than the North. So now let's go ahead and check for understanding. And the question says, what was a major result of the Missouri Compromise? A, it increased the number of immigrants settling in northern states. B, it provided financing for canals construction. C, it rapidly expanded railroad construction in southern states. Or D, it temporarily relieved sectional tensions. Alrighty guys, so hopefully we got this one right. The answer is D, it temporarily relieved sectional tensions. So like we mentioned, the, the issue, the tension that was occurring between the North and the South was that there was going to be an unbalance in power. Power meaning representation in, in Congress, in government. There was going to be more slave states now that we're adding Missouri as a slave state versus free states. So what did we do? We relieved that sectional tension. We kind of made it less tight, that rubber band, by adding Maine. And now for the time being, there's an equal amount of free to uh, slave states. So I hope that you guys got that one right. Now, for the next video, I want you guys to make sure that you watch the next one, which is having to do with the Compromise of 1850. And here's the question. What happens if we don't have another state to add to keep the balance of power in Congress? What do we do then? So 30 years later, that's what happens. The question is, we don't have enough. We don't have another state to add. What do we do? So uh, watch the next one called the Compromise of 1850. And so that you can see what America did to try to relieve that sectional tension between the North and the South once more in an attempt to avoid civil war. All right, guys, we'll see you later.